Spiritual Teaching 275 Love Each Other 1. I am love, the reason why you are forgiven and enjoy my pleasures. But don't just expect caresses and gifts of your father. Remember that I have also come as a teacher to make you understand your defects and imperfections and teach you how to correct yourselves. 2. I am with you in your spirit and I vibrate my light in your understanding, so that you appreciate the value of what you are receiving and acknowledging at the same time that not everything that comes to you has been earned with merit. I also do understand that what you have received up to now is not all I have to give you, and that what you want now is not all that the aspiration of your spirit will come to encompass when it is more developed. 3. Along with the tests and lessons that life gives you, is my teaching that explains and clarifies the meaning of each lesson, because only knowledge, experience and evolution can justly give you the title of disciples of my divinity in the third era. 4. What could you give to your brothers that would be your fruit, that would be testimony and affirmation of the word or doctrine that you are going to preach if you lack your own experience? 5. When you are already spiritualized and you meet men who suffer and despair, because they cannot possess what is ambitious in the world, you will see how their materiality contrasts with the elevation of my disciples, whose conformity will be great because their ambitions and desires will be noble, based on the firm conviction that in this life everything is a passenger. 6. My disciples will speak to the world with examples of spirituality, through a life that struggles to bring the spirit closer to divinity, instead of chaining him to the false riches of the world. 7. I know that those who materialize in future times will be scandalized when they know this doctrine, but your conscience will tell you that my word only speaks of the truth. 8. In the life of man everything is fleeting. His youth is an illusion, his glory of short duration, the momentary pleasure. That is why my doctrine comes to inspire you with the ideal of reaching the eternal, because the joys of the spirit and the glory reserved for him, once conquered, that never passes away. 9. People, it is so easy to give a bit of spirituality to your life that I ask you, why don't you do it? Why do you not try? You do not need to deviate from your human duties. 10. It is enough that you give your works a principle of spirituality, so that you stop being simple beings on earth and become beings of high spiritual life, capable of understanding the meaning of man's destiny. 11. I tell you again that I do not separate you from your fulfillment in the world, because there you also have sacred duties. But I tell you, do not give the world more importance than your spiritual development. 12. It is necessary that you deepen in the fulfillment of my work, that you analyze my word and understand the scope of my teachings. 13. I am speaking to spirits, knowing that my light will pass from them to matter and that once the matter has illuminated the mind and senses, will know how to become docile instruments of the consciousness. 14. Multitudes who hear this word, close your material eyes and hear the voice of your God in infinity. 15. It is not at this time Jesus the man who speaks to you and whom you can look at through squares and streets, along roads or valleys, Christ in spirit, present in all consciousness and in all understanding. It is my universal light poured out on all my children. 16. People, would you not like to contemplate the fruition of my doctrine in the world? Do you not long to see this valley of tears a land of peace? Well, work with love and you will have that happiness in your spirit. Yes, disciples, in your spirit, because you do not know by then what your dwelling will be. But it does not matter that you look at the triumph of light from the spiritual valley, Moreover, from there you will better appreciate the fruit of your works and your struggle. 17. Your heart beats hurriedly, saying to me, Master, when can our spirits sing that song of victory? 18. The crowd leaders tell me, Father, may our struggle not be sterile, but I say to some and to others, Yes, it is possible to reach that goal, which does not require the sacrifice of your life to achieve that ideal. But you have to observe each other one of my mandates, so that all your work is grounded in my truth and the struggle of all is directed to the end that I have traced you. 19. Spirituality, union, obedience, that is the firm base for the sanctuary that you will have to elevate to me. Complying with it, you will be able to see the flowering and the fruition of my work and of your struggle in humanity. 
20. Since my word began to be manifested by these spokesmen, I have been inspiring you with spirituality. I have been asking for unification and I have taught you obedience. 21. The first and the last know these teachings, repeated endlessly through my spokesman. 22. My teaching has spoken to you about spirituality, so that you can shed all external worship and come to love me and serve me in a spiritual, deep, sincere, elevated and pure way. 23. I have spoken to you a lot about unification, because if you do not unite the fruit of your gifts and your strength to fight, if you work in isolation, your work will not bear fruit. 24. I have spoken to you about obedience so that all your acts are subject to a perfect will such as mine and by complying with it, you will never err on the way. When the manifestation of my word comes to an end, all of you will be able to give the world proof of the truth of my revelation. 25. Those who comply with these mandates will have to be believed by their brothers, but those who pass over them and through their disunity, their disobedience and their lack of spirituality they try to teach the multitudes, I tell you, that sooner or later his lie and his hypocrisy will be discovered, being involved in the greatest tests and abandonments even of the most faithful. 26. Could you call this the triumph of my doctrine? No, people, it is not confusion what you must find at the end of the fight. It is peace, joy, light, in which your journey must culminate. 27. Do you think that in the face of a test of ingratitude and disobedience on the part of this people, my spirit will remain impassive indefinitely? No, people, I will bring my justice and shake with it those who disobey me, how I made them shudder with my tenderness when they heard my word. 28. My teaching cannot be clearer or simpler, but if your memory were unfaithful to you and you came to forget it, I will inspire those who have to gather my lessons to form with them the book of my word given in this third era. That book will make you remember everything you have forgotten. It will make you cry of regret when you are in your trials, and it will make you understand that in the end it is my will that is done and my truth that triumphs. 29. Why does my word sometimes seem harsh? It does not contain harshness. It is full of the love that I have for you, because as your father I don't want your children to cry. 30. When I speak to you in this tone, seek after the word of the judge, the presence of the master and the essence of the father and you will find all this. 31. When I warn you and prophesy to you, know that I know your future and that I know you better than yourselves, because I am life. 32. In your silence, learn to mentally elevate yourselves to me. In your recollection, speak to me with the Spirit and you will have my answer. 33. Educate your understanding, making it separate from all superfluous ideas, teaching it to clear the moment of your spiritual communion, so that it is not an obstacle that prevents you from concentrating and detaching in that blessed instant. 34. How blessed is the spirit that achieves that mental preparation and that inner detachment. All its gifts arise and manifest. Inspiration, revelation, intuition, healing power, the word and many attributes more appear showing each one its essence and its mission. 35. Set aside a few moments of your time each day and dedicate them to spiritual prayer and you will soon see the fruit of that exercise. Do not wait for the day when I present myself to give you my teaching to prepare you, why you will always be starting and stumbling with disturbances that will not allow you to recreate yourself spiritually. 36. Dedicate a few moments each day to this practice, you will always find me willing to listen to you and help them. 37. True prayer is not practiced at this time by humanity. Hence it has had to form prayers and prayers to repeat them mechanically as many times as necessary. 38. Man no longer knows how to inspire himself to speak to me with the Spirit. He is completely unaware of the spiritual language that it is up to everyone to know. It is that he ignores the way of exercising, stripping off all ritual, withdrawing of all materiality, until concentrating in the depths of himself to be able to perceive my presence and receive the light of inspiration. 39. That is why I say to you that the more you sacrifice your inclination to pray before symbols and dedicate yourself ceremonies to seek the inner sanctuary, 
You will be contemplating how your gift develops, grows and rises of spiritual communication, approaching step by step to the communication of spirit to spirit that will be when man begins to pray with perfection. 40. Now, understand that if my will is that you teach your brothers how to achieve perfection in prayer, you have to prepare yourself to give proof of the truth and the strength that exists in it. 41. Are you going to teach them that it is enough to close their eyes so that the form is perfect? Are you going to cheat your fellow men, adopting unimportant practices, while inside you there is no true preparation? Not that, people, because you are not going to deceive yourselves or your brothers and less your father. 42. When you teach to pray, it is because you will be able to test the truth, strength, and efficacy of praying spiritually. You are going to heal the sick with prayer. You are going to make peace where discord reigns. You are going to save whoever is in danger. Then yes, you will be believed and they will want to imitate you. Your teaching it will awaken faith in hearts marveling at the truth of the trials you gave them. 43. Do not forget that for prayer to be effective, your faith has to be firm, great, and that charity be the essence of your elevation towards your Father. 44. All who have achieved miracles, all who have given proof of spiritual power, have prayed thus. So the patriarchs of the early days prayed, from spirit to spirit. So Moses prayed in the desert and Daniel in the lion's den. Thus I came in Jesus, to strengthen man in the knowledge of true prayer, testing before their eyes the power of spiritual prayer. 45. Jesus prayed in the desert before the crowd and multiplied the loaves and the fishes, astonishing the men. Prayer before the tomb of Lazarus and gave proof that prayer born of faith and charity gives health and life. He prayed before his disciples, revealing to them the power that man acquires when he knows how to communicate with his Father. 46. How far from my teachings is this humanity? Everything about her is superficial, false, external, ostentatious. That is why his spiritual power is null and to make up for the lack of strength and development in his spirit, he has delivered into the arms of science, developing intelligence. 47. Thus, through science, man has come to feel strong, great, and powerful. But I tell you that strength and that greatness are insignificant next to the power of the spirit, which you have not allowed to grow or manifest. 48. When lust and materialism have reached their maximum degree in men, causing them to forget their origin. When the overflowing torrent of passions, pleasures, and vices have made many men to be unconscious beings, without notion of their duties towards God, towards their family, and towards others, is when this word has come to humanity, like a spring of crystalline waters for hearts thirsty. 49. You are so familiar with sin that your life comes to seem the most natural, normal, and lawful thing to do, and without however, it seems that Sodom and Gomorrah, Babylon and Rome had thrown all their wickedness and their sin. 50. Although it may seem absurd, this is the right time for my word to find an echo in the hearts of men. 51. Remember pagan Rome, jaded with pleasure, tired of enjoying the delights of the flesh, opened her heart to receive my message. 52. Those events will be repeated and you will see my seed germinate in the towns where you contemplated men further from the path of truth. 53. My word full of wisdom, comfort and promises of regeneration will seek the fibers to which the unclean, the bad has never come, the dead to the light and to the truth of life will rise and the time of morality has been destroyed, it will be rebuilt. 54. If at that time the pagans, converted to my doctrine, sought salvation in the love that my word gives, the materialists of this time will seek the way of their redemption in the example that Jesus wrote with his life. But they will also be inspired by the spiritual light that at this time my spirit comes to shed on man. What does this light contain? The knowledge of spiritual life, the revelation of the powers of the spirit, the clarification of the mysteries that man could not penetrate. 55. I have made you, people, the depository of my new word. For a long time I have manifested myself to you, so that you have the certainty that it is my presence in spirit, which you have and that you have had enough time to assimilate my teachings, write them down and meditate on them. 56. Why all this? 
so that when my manifestation disappears from among you, you will not say that it was a fleeting apparition, of which you are not certain or sure. 57. Now that you know from me that the last day for these teachings is approaching, you begin to feel the responsibility by remaining no longer as beginners or disciples, but as teachers, emissaries and witnesses of the message that you heard from the Master. 58. Some of you are full of faith, vigor and determination, waiting for the right time to start the day. Others, on the other hand, doubt of themselves and tremble at the fight. To the latter I ask, is it possible that other peoples, who did not listen directly my word, get up before you, moved only by the testimony that I arrived? 59. What is it that intimidates you? Your heart tells me, Lord, not being able to demonstrate palpably the truth before the materialists and the unbelievers, you have not understood me. I have not said that the spiritual, that it is invisible and intangible, go to materialize it before the eyes of skeptical men, so that they believe in the spiritual. I first of all ask that you purify your life and become spiritualized in such a way that with your words and your works you give the best proofs that the doctrine that you profess contains truth. 60. It seems very difficult for you to present evidence that will satisfy the one who seeks the scientific explanation of everything, without, however, such is the greatness that I have deposited in my teaching, that in it you will find the solution to answer and an explanation of any problem you have. 61. Do you think that I have brought you a backward doctrine? Study my word and you will be convinced that she has come to manifest in a way that is in accordance with both the spiritual and mental evolution of this humanity. 62. Neither before nor now have I condemned your science, because it is a path through which man also finds my truth, who seeks me in all knowledge, find and feel my presence and discover my laws. What I disapprove of is the misuse of what was only created for good purposes. 63. Today men are much more capable than the ancients to understand the essence and power of God. In this see the influence that science has had on the knowledge of men. 64. When humanity only believed that there was what it could discover with its eyes and even ignored the shape of the world that inhabited, conceived a God limited to what his eyes knew. But as his mind was discovering mystery after mystery, the universe was widening before his sight and the greatness and omnipotence of God grew before the wondering intelligence of man. That is why I had to bring you at this time a teaching that is according to your evolution. 65. But I ask you, is material science what my revelation contains? No, the science I teach you speaks of an existence beyond nature that you have contemplated and examined for so long. My revelation discovers the path that elevates the spirit to a dwelling place from where it can discover, know and understand everything. 66. May God communicate spiritually with men. May the spiritual world communicate and manifest itself in your life. That the unknown worlds and dwellings come to communicate with you, does it seem impossible or less strange? Do you want your knowledge to remain stationary and the Father never reveal to you more than what what has He already revealed to you? 67. Do not be routine or limit knowledge to your spirit. 68. Today you can deny, fight and persecute my spiritual doctrine, but I know that tomorrow you will surrender to the truth. 69. All divine revelation, when appearing, has been combated and denied, more to the desert has that light has imposed itself. 70. Faced with the discoveries of science, humanity has also been skeptical and has finally had to surrender before reality. 71. You have been incredulous because of your materiality. At first you believed only in what your eyes saw, but you evolved and you already believed in what your intelligence discovered. Why shouldn't you believe and know what it is beyond your material universe? Once your spirit is the one that penetrates that field of infinity to know. You do not yet know how much the humanity of the future has to know. Compare both spiritual and material of the men of the first times with the knowledge that you have today, and this will give you an idea of what will be human life in the times to come. 72. This is the propitious time to wake up to a new era, to prepare yourselves and prophesy how much you will contemplate. 73. Understand, people, that my coming has been timely. My peace be with you.